want to do here very briefly is just show where COVID-19 mandates and free expression actually collide on a university campus. And so I'll start with a preposition or maybe a claim. The COVID-19 pandemic with its associated mandates allowed for the acceleration and legitimization on campus of censorship and also the punishment for ideological dissenters. Therefore, it's my contention that in their capacity to serve as models for future actions and policies, the precedents set under the cover of COVID-19 rules will make future erosion of academic freedom and free expression on campus easier and more frequent. Now, for the next few minutes, and I will keep it brief, I'll give you my account, my personal account, that reinforces my claim. And so here's the case study as I see it. In my capacity as a full-time tenured professor at Wilfrid Laurier University, I've been teaching a course in public speaking for over 15 years. I created the course, and apart from legitimate leaves for things like sabbatical and the like, I've been the only instructor. The course has been a point of controversy with my administration, and the controversy arises primarily from the topics that I use in my persuasive speeches. You see, I have students research, write, and deliver a persuasive speech on topics that are deemed to be politically incorrect. The ideas I have them working with breach no laws and are solidly supported by empirical evidence, but they're, be they're deemed off limits by my colleagues. They hate the fact that students would consider the other side of these hot button issues. For example, in the past, I've raised the ire of the woke mob on campus because I allowed students to research such things as uh, whether or not women and men's salaries are different due to sexism and discrimination, or is it other variables? I've had them research and then write on whether or not police shootings of blacks are racially motivated, and I've also had them look at whether the science suggests that there might be good reasons that biological males living as trans women should not compete in women's sports. In the past, Students would be allowed to argue the other side of the issue, but I'd always encourage them to take the least popular position because it would grow their intellect and their skills, as hard things always do. So as I say, my assignment in the past has gotten me in hot water. I've had human rights officials at, or, I'm sorry, equity officials at my university then tell me that I was in breach of the Human Rights Code. Their claims were proven to be false. They only wanted me to stop and to change my assignment. So nothing has ever changed in my assignment, but something did change in terms of the complaints against me. Something did change in terms of the outcomes by the fall of 2021. You see, in the fall of 2021, something changed in the culture. The government would give the campus authoritarians an open invitation to live out their wildest totalitarian impulses. And the invitation was topped with a cherry, or to be more precise, a syringe. I'm talking about the COVID-19 mandates. You see, campus critical thinkers, truly critical, or what we might call free thinkers, who in the past could not legally be compelled to conformity, now with the blessing of the government, could be sent packing. Students were deregistered from their programs in the hundreds and even thousands. Staff and faculty were suspended without pay or fired. A tipping point in the battleground against freedom had arrived and the campus woke army seized the day, to my own case. Seeing that discrimination could be practiced with impunity, my dean, my, sorry, my dean came gunning for my public speaking course. Admittedly, I provided a clear target in acknowledgement of the mandates that had started in September of 2021, I created a final assignment, my public speaking assignment, and I sent it out and there were only two, two topics. My students could argue that universities should not have implemented vaccine mandates for student staff and faculty, or my class could argue that those who were objecting to receiving a COVID-19 vaccine had valid empirical and philosophical reasons for the position. I didn't allow students to argue that universities should have implemented the mandate, and I didn't allow them to argue that people should get the vaccines because I explained in the guidelines it would have been too easy. 
That narrative was popular from every political statement and every news report. Well, I released the assignment, and then in November, I got a call from my dean, or I'm sorry, an email from my dean. He wanted to do a meeting. Now, again, we were virtual, so the meeting would happen by phone. He said that he'd heard from other faculty who had heard from students. They were concerned about my assignment. I was told by my dean that students would be mentally traumatized if they were made to research the other side of the COVID-19 issue. It was harmful to require them to look at empirical evidence contrary to the pro-vaccine or pro-mandate narrative. Then he made the big request. In breach of our collective agreement, which states that administration must not impede the academic freedom of a professor, I was repeatedly asked to change my assignment. Repeatedly. I mentioned the collective agreement. I was continued. I was continually asked. And I said no unequivocally. So in, in the interest of time, and I am growing to the end, I'll give you the conclusion of the story. When it became clear that I wouldn't budge, my dean held a private meeting with the students in the class. And though it was well past the deadline, about half a dozen students suddenly were given permission to drop. Ironically, in their eyes, it was better to forfeit the work that they'd accomplished up to November than to have to objectively examine an issue with which they disagreed. But when the students left, I, I thought, that we were at the end of the situation. But this spring, just this March, I found that my dean was not ready to give up. He had seen that the winds of change were still blowing in his direction. The last few months had taught him it's open season on the non-compliant. Non so when I examined my teaching load for this coming fall and winter semesters, I was shocked to see that I had been removed as the instructor for both of my sections of public speaking. The course that I created, I taught for over 15 years, for which I'm imminently qualified, it was now slated to be taught by an unnamed part-time employee. So I alerted the chair of my department, who, passing the buck, said, you need to take this up with the dean. In my correspondence with the dean, I asked, and here's the quote, given that, that I'm eminently qualified, and given that the courses are slated to be taught, can you please let me know why you are preventing me from teaching these two sections? Of course, I knew that it was punishment for allowing debate on COVID mandates and vaccines, but I wanted him to admit it. I also asked if other tenured faculty under his supervision had their teaching loads changed by him. He answered neither of those questions, but simply said such changes in course load were in his power as dean. My collective agreement forbids deans from discriminating in course assignments on ideological grounds. It forbids intrusions on academic freedom. Why did my dean think that now, after all these years, he could get away with violating my rights? Well, I believe that he was inspired by the greater authoritarianism and overt discrimination that was permitted on matters related to COVID-19. My dean, he saw that in the name, name of COVID, informed consent, bodily autonomy, and even scientific debate could be overruled. So he naturally concluded that other safeguards afforded to professors could be tossed out the window as well.